Hello everyone, we will be learning about specific gravity in this presentation. Specific gravity and density can both convey the information about how relatively heavy a mineral is, but they both are two different quantitative attributes of a mineral. Density is the weight of a mineral divided by its volume and will have the SI units of kilogram per meter cube. Whereas specific gravity is a ratio, weight of the mineral divided by the weight of the water of the same volume gives a specific gravity. Since it is a ratio, it has no units. We have two factors which greatly affect the specific gravity of minerals, the atomic weight of the constituent elements and the way the atoms are packed in crystal structure. We will explore these factors one by one. To demonstrate the effect of molecular weight, let us consider baritis, which is to the left, and anglesite, which is to the right. Both are sulfate minerals and they have the same type of crystal structure. It can be seen that baritis has lower specific gravity than anglesite because the atomic weight of barium of baritis is less than the atomic weight of lead from anglesite. And it should make sense that the heavier constituent element increases the specific gravity of the mineral. And it should also make intuitive sense that the closer the constituent molecules will be, the more will be the number of molecules that can fit in the same volume causing the specific gravity to rise. Quartz has a specific gravity of 2.65, but other variants of quartz like poesite and strixovite, which are formed in the extreme conditions of high temperature and pressure during a meteorite impact, have a higher specific gravity. Another example to demonstrate this property is diamond and graphite. Diamond with close packing has a higher specific gravity than graphite. Specific gravity is of immense importance. The identification of minerals and hence, it is crucial to know the various methods by which we measure the specific gravity of minerals. First instrument we have here is the Volker steel yard and it is used to measure the specific gravity of large specimens. Using it, we first measure the weight of the specimen in air WS. Then we place a large container of water and measure the weight of the specimen in that water. This is WW. For example, if the weight of sample in air is 10 kg, then WS equals 10 kg. And if the weight of the same sample in water is 6 kg, then WW equals 6 kg. Whenever something is immersed in water, it experiences a loss in weight equal to the weight of water it displaces due to the burnt force. Here in the example, we know that the weight of water of the same volume as that of specimen is 4 kg, which is WS minus WW. Finally, we divide the weight of specimen by weight of water that is 10 divided by 4 to obtain specific gravity which in this example is 2.5. Another instrument that we have at hand is Jolly Spring Balance and it is used to measure specific gravity of small specimens. Here also we have the same formula but the measuring technique is different. In this instrument we use Hooke's law due to which extension in spring is proportional to the weight. The spring balance may have scale as gram of centimeters but both will suffice as we only need a ratio. Another technique which is most commonly used for finding the specific gravity of gemstones is dipping them in heavy liquids. These heavy liquids are of known specific gravity which is labeled on them. If our gemstone is of the same specific gravity as that of the fluid, it will float in the middle of the solution. However, if it has less specific gravity than the liquid, it will float and otherwise it will sink. Using the previous methods, you can precisely determine the specific gravity of the specimen. Some minerals have specific gravity less than 2, while others have specific gravity even greater than 10. Because of this great variability, it is possible to distinguish between minerals with high, moderate or low specific gravity simply by holding them in hand. This process of approximating specific gravity is called hefting. Specific gravity of some of the minerals has been given here. The property of high specific gravity has been exploited very successfully in some of the minerals having it. For example, baritis. Due to its high specific gravity, it is used as drilling mud in the petrochemical industry. While a hole is being drilled, chips of rocks start getting accumulated in the way which hinder further drilling. This could be removed by forcefully pumping water, but that would require lots of force. Instead, drilling mud is used and since it has specific gravity which is more than that of rocks, it becomes easier to remove debris by pouring drilling mud in the hole. Placer gold deposits are formed when gold from weathered rock concentrates in stream beds. The high specific gravity of gold, 17.2 and that of diamond, 3.25, makes it possible for crystals to settle at the bottom of the pan. This process is called panning. 
specific gravity sense also used to separate minerals from the rest of the gang in mineral deposits. Thank you.